Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Check. He is worthy. David said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let's, let us give him praise. Amen. He inhabits the praises. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because he knew when he got to the house of the Lord that there was power there. And there was praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer works. Amen. It works. Thank you, Jesus. I was ministering one night, like Brother Harper was saying, to, we had a lady in the church. She was about in the midway like that, and she quit breathing right in the middle of my preaching. And God made a, did a miracle. She was no pulse, nothing. We went and laid hands on her, and she went, <gasps> life come back. He gives us life and life more abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. He is an awesome God, and He is an on-time God. Hallelujah. Tonight, if we would, let's go into Hebrews. I'm going to read in Hebrews 13 and verse 5. Then I'm going to read in the Philippians 4 and 11. Let your conversation be without competence. And be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Philippians 4.11 says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Brother Harper, would you pray? Tonight, Lord, we open our hearts and we open our minds. Your word is already anointed. Dear God, thank you. It was written under the dictates of the Holy Ghost. But now God anoint this servant to give new life to it so that we hear and have a deeper understanding of your word. Dear Lord, let our faith rise and let us, Lord, find stamina and strength in the midst of an evil generation. Anoint now. Bless us all together. Reach the lost. Reach the backslider, reach the discouraged saint, and let victory shout in the heart of the overcomer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, God. Amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord another hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Praise hallelujah, God. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. I want to preach for just a little while on Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Pac-Man is an amaz amazing action video game. An icon character which is a yellow hockey puck shaped chewing machine. Pac-Man was originally called Puck-Man in 1980 in Japan. In North America the game was re released by Midway Manufacturing as part of its licensing ag agreement with Nemo America. The game is played by a player who must eat all the dots inside of an enclosed maze while avoiding four colored ghosts for eating them. So a Pac-Man makes its way through the maze. It eats these large flashing dots called power pellets, which causes the ghost to temporarily turn blue allowing Pac-Man to eat them for bonus points. But the reality of the game is that Pac-Man can't get enough. Pac-Man cannot get enough is what this game is showing us. And it does, it, all it wants is more and more and more. We're living in a world today is all they want is more and more and more. We're living in a time they just can't get enough. they never satisfied. They're never satisfied with anything. We get and then we want more and more. Uh, it's not just in the world, but sometimes it comes to the church houses. And the devil tries to come against his, God's people. And we do, you know, the devil is trying everything he can 
to stop what God is trying to do in this end time revival. And we are not, we are fighting against things every day. We see things that are coming against us, are going against our families, are coming against our friends, are coming against everything that we see. It's trying to divide. The Bible says the devil, he is a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. He's trying everything he can to stop the move of God. But he's already been defeated. I've read the first of the book and I've read the back of the book. I know who's going to win because for greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm not stopping for anything. I'm not going back. You're not going to eat anything up. Devil, you're not taking my joy. Devil, you're not taking my peace. Devil, you're not taking my love. I'm going to fight with everything I got. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They're never happy. All they want is more. We're like that fat man. It begins to eat. And they begin to eat up all the good that, that you try to get. You know, there's times in life when everything's going good and everything's going great. You're up on the mountain. It's easy to shout on the mountaintop. But it's hard when you're in the valley, when you're all alone and nobody's around you. And the devil's sitting there. He's eating everything up that you're trying to do. And you're trying to do this on your own. You can't do this on your own. You've got to grab a hold of the master's hand. The Bible says his ear is not heavy, that he cannot hear. His arm is not short, that he cannot reach. God is talking to somebody. God is reaching out. God is reaching for you. God is calling you. Hallelujah. There was a man in the Bible by the name of Ahab. Ahab had had everything at his fingertip. Yeah, you would say he had he was blessed, but he was a mess. Ahab was a mess. He wanted something that he didn't need. Sometimes in life we want some things that we don't need. And God is trying to show us the direction. God is trying to speak. And God is trying to show us where we need to be. But the things of this world is eating everything up. The canker worms are trying to destroy the things. The devil's trying to destroy the good in your life. But I come to tell somebody tonight, it's time to stand in the devil's face and say, I'm coming back. I've got victory. Victory, victory shall be mine. If I ever hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles, victory, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Ahab, he couldn't get enough. He was rich. He went to Naboth. He said, Naboth, I want your vineyard. I want this vineyard is close to my palace. My garden will look good. Everything that I have will look good right here. But Naboth said, no, you don't understand. My grandmama, my grandpapa, my daddy worked this land and nobody's taking it. I've come to tell somebody tonight God has given you something and the devil can't take it. You're not for sale. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I've come too far to turn back now. I've come too far to give up now. God is my strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Naboth, Ahab said, I want it, and I want it now. You know, when it's something that's precious to you, the Bible says after the Holy Ghost, you receive power. When we receive power, the Bible says we can walk on serpents, scorpions, things that try the devil that comes against us. He, you, he comes and tries to devour, but he can't. You know what? He can't cross the bloodline. 
He can't cross the bloodline in your life. You got a grandmama that's praying for you. You got a grandpapa that's praying for you. You got a mama and daddy's praying for you. You can't give up. You can't quit. You've got to keep believing. You got to keep loving and keep holding on to the promises of God. It's not over. Just keep hanging on. Because when he went back and he told Ahab, told Ahab, you're not getting it. He went back to his palace, the Bible says. He went up to his room. He went into his room and he laid on the bed pouting. We see too many Christians that want to be pouting. It's not pouting time, it's fighting time. We're warriors. We're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and, the, and your testimony. you got to reach out and fight with everything you got. Like I was telling Brother Larry when we were at the, at the hotel today, the power of God was in there. We were speaking in tongues. We were crying. We were weeping. We were reaching to God. I'm telling you what, you don't have to be in the church house to get the presence of God in your life. We felt the prey. Because he said, when the praise goes up, his glory comes down. And I told Brother Larry, I said, those giants that you're fighting, I said, you just don't knock them down. You take the sword and cut his head off. You got to cut that thing up and get rid of it. Put those things which are behind and press toward the mark of the high calling. you got to quit looking behind us because there's nothing behind us. Everything's in front of us. Keep pressing. Keep believing. Oh, keep trusting God because the Pac-Man is trying to eat everything up in your life. Don't lose our focus. Don't lose. You know, it's always bad to see a pouting person. And it's always really bad to see a pouting man. And I've been there where I pouted before. My wife said, it's time to straighten up. She said, when you were a child, you spake as a child. But when you came a man, you put away childish things. It's time to stand up in the devil's face and say, I'm tired of pouting. I'm tired of going through the motions. I'm tired of the devil beating me up one side down the other. I've got victory. Oh, I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul. Just like the Bible says, I've got power. Devil, get thee behind me, Satan. You're not taking my joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I feel the power of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. You know, my wife, I got two, I got four children. I got two 24-year-old twin boys. I got a 12-year-old daughter and a six-year-old daughter. God has blessed me beyond measure. But my wife, brother, Harper went to Walmart the other day. And she is at Walmart, and somehow my little girl, my littlest girl, somehow there was a toy that got in the, in the cart, in the bag, before they got out of the checkout line. And the Lord spoke to my wife and said, look in the bag. She said, all right, Lord, I'll look in the bag. She looked in the bag, and there was a toy in the bag that didn't get paid for. And kids today, they'd be like, hey, Mom and Dad, that's a free toy. No, the Bible says train a child in the way he shall go, and he won't depart from it. So my wife, she said, no. She said, I'm taking the toy back in. She said, girls, what if we're on our way home, and a car comes in our lane, and takes our life because of something that we don't do. 
My wife went back into Walmart. She said, ma'am, she said, I have a toy here. I don't understand how it didn't get paid for. I don't know if my little girl, actually, my little daughter had it. And I'm not sure, but I want to bring it back. The woman said, wow, we don't see that very often. She said, that is amazing to teach your children that way. And my wife said, well, I'm just wanting to be honest. So she went back in, and she, my daughter and, and, and my wife, they, they left there. They were on their way home. And there's a big curve that goes right around our house. As they were driving down the road, my wife looks up, and there was a car in her lane passing another vehicle. In just an instant, God pulled that car over into the other lane. And my wife looked at my children and said, see what I told you. That could have been our life because we were disobedient. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. The things that we don't understand sometimes. God's got it all in control. God's got everything. And my wife called me up. She said, Tim, she said, I believe if we wouldn't have done that, we would have been in a bad automobile accident. Faith but cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We've got to hear the voice of God. God is speaking, but there's too many people are not listening to what God is trying to tell his people. Because as fast as it comes out that He's eating everything he can get a hold of. Every time you get a blessing, you walk out of the church. He's Them people don't care about you. Why'd you dance tonight? Why'd you shout tonight? Why'd you do that tonight? You know why I did it tonight? Because I need the victory. Victory. I need a shout in my step. I need joy unspeakable and full of glory. I need joy down in my soul. I need joy on my lips. I need praise on my lips. I need the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not for sale. I'm not selling what I have. You know, many years ago, I was born in Pentecost my whole life. My daddy was a Pentecostal preacher my whole life. But did I live it? No. I went down the wrong road of life. I've seen some of the greatest outpours of the Holy Ghost. I've seen people, miracles happen. I was on the road with my dad for 10 years, evangelizing as a young child. Cut my teeth on a pew. Did everything that I've seen God do great miraculous work. But one night, I got with the wrong crowd. One night! The pack began to eat. He began to eat everything that I had, and he began because when I went, he said, "When I when I'm weak, he is strong. But when I, I was too weak, I, I couldn't hang on." Every young people, you've got to hang on to this. Don't let the pack man eat you up. Keep believing. Don't let the devil eat you up. Keep trusting God. Keep hanging on. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't quit. I remember many nights my dad would be waiting up on me. He wouldn't go to bed, Brother Harper, till I came home. He knew what I was doing. But all he could do was pray. The Bible says a prayer of a righteous man availeth much. As I found myself in the drug houses, I found myself in the alcohol, in the bar, living the life that I thought was good. Pac-Man. He was eating me alive. Trying to take everything I have. 
sitting there going to places. God will spare your life. God will keep his hand upon you like I preached this morning, the anointing on your life. God will keep you. I can remember as a young child, my dad prayed over me that God would use me and that God would, would use me in the gifts and God would, would, would take me places. But I just began to go, uh, I was scared. Run to it, don't run away from it. Run to it because there's nothing out there, young people. I've been there. I've had every drug you can have. I've had every drink you can have. But this well that I drank from, it'll never run dry. This well that I drank from, I've never felt this good. I've never felt, I've never had a high that felt like this. I've never had anything that could give me the joy that I have right now. Don't lose it. Keep holding on. Keep trusting God through your situation. It may look easy on the other side, but the grass is only green where you water it. Sometimes we're like that Pac-Man, never enough. Just like Saul when God told him to destroy the Amalekites. He didn't listen to God. You know, there was times in my life, I can remember, I was sitting in the balcony at our church, and we had a youth pastor, very precious man of God, went on to be with the Lord at a very young age, but he was a praying youth pastor, and I believe you've got one here tonight, that prays for you, that believes God for you. That reaches God for you. But one night, Brother Harper, I was sitting up in the balcony on the right-hand side. As I was looking, sitting there, and I would look down at Brother, Brother Grocky Green was his name. And he would look at me, Brother Harper, and he would shake his head. He would drop his head. He would raise his head, and he would look at me. And he, like, Lord, what's going on? Service was about over. He came up to the top of the balcony. He said, Brother Tim, he said, I know you're running. He said, you can run, but you can't hide. He said, Brother Tim, he said, I see you in a body cast. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. He said, I don't know what it's going to be and what's going to happen, but God just showed me if you don't get to that altar tonight. There's something getting ready to happen in your life that's going to be drastic. I ran to that altar. I cried out to God. The next day I was playing first base, playing baseball. The man hit the ball, was running to first base. He hit me when he did. He hit my hand and put it all the way back to the back of my hand. And he said, brother, that's God warning you. He said, next time's going to be the judgment. What I'm saying here tonight is that if I wouldn't have went to that altar, who knows, I could have got an automobile accident. My life could have been destroyed so bad that I was not recognizable. But I thank God for a, a youth pastor that heard from God. What I'm telling you tonight, young people, if your youth pastor tells you something, you better take heed to it. Because God is speaking to his people. God is speaking to his ministers. God is speaking to our pastor, our associate pastors, uh, our youth pastors, uh, our, uh, all, the, all, the, all the ministry. God is trying to reach out uh, and get our attention. Uh, we've got to listen uh, because the world is trying to eat everything you have. Trying to destroy the good in you. I came that night. I was driving down the road. And I had a trunk load of stuff that I shouldn't have had. And I was going to a house. And the 
Lord spoke to me in sin. And God said, don't go there. I got to go there because if I don't go, something's going to happen. I've got to go there. God said, don't go there. I went around the block, and when I did, there was 14 cop cars sitting at that house that just done a drug bust. What I'm telling you tonight, my God is able to keep your protecting hand upon your life. God is able to keep the devil from eating everything up inside of you as long as you stay faithful, as long as you stay holy and acceptable to God and stay pure and keep your mind right and your spirit right. You know, Saul, he listened to the people instead of listening to God. Young people, you can't listen to your peers. You can't listen to them peers because they're because peer pressure's tough. I know I've been there. And it ain't been very long ago. I'm just 42 years old. I've been there. I've seen it. I seen a young girl last week was in my youth, it was in my youth class when I was younger. And she came and we, we went and wist, witnessed her. And we said, uh, you gotta get back to God. She said, I'm young, I've got time. I've got kids, I gotta raise, I'm having a good time. In a week's time, she walked out into eternity. We don't have time. You're not too young. You're not too old. The devil's wanting to eat everything you have. But I come to tell somebody there's victory tonight. There's joy in your life tonight. You know, it's time that we destroy the sin. And start doing what God has told us to do. We got to get rid of the sin in the camp. When we tell God that his blessings are not enough, that's a dangerous place to be. Just as Judas, Judas wanted Jesus and he wanted the world. The Bible says you can't serve two masters. It's either God or the devil. In this world, the devil is running rapid. He's running like crazy across this world. And we've got to reach out and touch this generation. We've got to reach out and touch this dying world that's lost and undone. This old land of this world was more important to him than the precious promised land. I wish somebody could ask Judas, is being a pac man worth it? Is having everything in this world worth it? The Bible says if a man gained the whole world and loses his soul, what has he gained? He hasn't gained nothing. I believe that man that said, I'll tear down my barns and build greater barns, could tell us that it's not worth it. It's not worth hungering and thirsting for the things of this world. Because our Bible says, he that hunger and thirst after righteousness. He shall be filled. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill it up overflowing with your presence. Fill it up overflowing with your victory. Victory, let your spirit move upon my life. Let your love flow through my veins. I want to be filled with the gift of God and, and all of his power. I don't want to long or lust after this world. I don't want to be a pack man. I want to be an impact by the power of God. I want to be an impact on my friends. I want to be an impact on my family. Like I was telling the brother tonight, I said, you know, when I worked in the coal mines, I said, I asked God to get me out of the coal mine. But I didn't ask God how to get me out of the coal mine. We better be specific to what we ask them. Because God, he is a perfect God. He is a Pacific God. I had a real good friend of mine. Been witnessing to him. And I asked him, I said, I've been wanting him to come to church. And he said, you know, he said at one time, he said, I asked God if he was really real to show me. And he said, that was the wrong thing to say. 
because he said when I was driving down the road, he said a, a car pulled out in front of me, and when it did, her car stalled. He said, I was running 55 mile an hour down the road. And he said, all I could see was a baby sitting in the car seat looking at me. And he said, all of a sudden, God grabbed my will and took me and saved the people's life. And he said, I hit a tree. And he said, the next day, he said, I was sitting inside the hospital with appendicitis attack because there was, there was glass that went down inside my throat and got into my appendix. And it was about to take my life. Then he got a bad, some kind of reaction to something that he ate. And he said, God, I'll never ask you that again. Because, God, I know that you're real. And I know you're real in my soul. My God is real and I can feel him in my soul. He's brought me too far to make me to, to, for me to think he's not real. I, I know he's real. He's real tonight to, to take care of your situation. If you need God tonight, if you need the Holy Ghost, you need to be set free. If you need whatever you need tonight, he's in this place to give you restoration. Hallelujah. I've come to tell you God has given you this moment to repack. To make a chance. To make a decision. But don't think you've got forever. Because there is a story about a pack man in Luke chapter 16 and 19. Jesus called him a rich man. He had everything in the world. Poor old Lazarus, he didn't have nothing. Yeah, he did have something. He had the one that impacted him. He had the one that raised him from the dead. He had the one that gave him the strength when he couldn't make it on his own. But the Bible says there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which is laid, that which that laid it at his gate full of sores, desiring to be fed from the crumbs which fell from the, man, from the rich man's table. He wanted just a crumb. But as we know, the story goes on. The Bible says the rich man died and Lazarus died. And the Bible says that the rich man looked out of hell in Abraham's boot. The things of life were eating him alive. Brother Harper, I believe, I could be wrong, but this is what I feel. But I think people in hell can see what's going on in heaven. I believe every torment, everything that you've done in your life is going through your mind. I don't think people can, I know people in heaven can't see you, but I believe people in hell can see them. And the rich man saw Lazarus. Lazarus didn't see the rich man, but the rich man saw Lazarus. All the things that ate him up, all the pack man that ate him up all his life. The rich man said, if you could just send Lazarus one time. Just one little drop of water. To take away this torment to take away this pain I'm telling you tonight it's not too late it's not over till Gabriel blows that trumpet and I believe he's asking the Lord every day is it time yet no 
Oh, no, it's not time yet. There's still some more that needs it. There's some more that's reaching out for me. There's some more that's wanting, wanting to love me. It's not time yet. There was a young girl and a young boy that was sitting in the back row of a church one time. They were sitting in the back of the church and the girl was, the boy was just having their self a big time. Everything was just, the service was going great. The power of God was moving. But they were disrupting the service. As the boy got upset when the pastor came back and talked to them, the boy said, I don't have time for this. You can stay if you want to. I don't have time for this. So all of a sudden, the girl, she ran out and she said, I don't have time for this either. took out of that church about 100 miles an hour and down the road there was a bad accident down the road. As a mama in the church called the pastor and said, Pastor, you got to get here. You got to get here now. There's been something happening in this pad. They got to the hospital and the little girl was sitting in the back and she began to holler the song book. The song book. What about the song book? What about the song book? As the young girl was taking her last breath into eternity, the last she thing she said was the song book. The pastor went back to church with tears rolling down his eyes, broken, hurt, tore to pieces. Why? Why? The message I preached was, it was on. God was speaking. Why? The Bible says not all is going to make it. The Bible says straight is the gate, narrow is the way, and there will be few that will find it. The Bible says hell enlarges itself daily. The pastor went back to the church, sat in the back row, and the first thing that came to his mind, the song book. He opened the song book up and found where the young girl wrote and said, I'll take my chances. We don't have any chance. I'm not taking, I, I've took enough chances over my lifetime. I've made it through slips and cracks so many times, it, it, I may not have another chance. There's some people, they can make it through life for many years, and everything will go just fine and dandy. And there's some that go out just one time and never make it back home. I can remember a young girl, I'm fixing the clothes, there was a young girl in my Sunday school class. She was a little bitty babe, little bitty thing. Her dad and mom would put her on the bus every Sunday. I was an EMT for several years, worked on the ambulance department in the town that I lived in that we picked them kids up. I went to that, heard that call go off, Brother Harper. As I heard that call, the pack man, the devil, was eating. Eating the life out of them people. As I heard that address that I can remember going to on Sunday morning to pick them children up. As I walked up to that door and that little baby girl came out, brother, with blood all over her face. Screaming out to me, Brother Tim, can you save my mama? Can you save my mama? I reached a hold of that little girl and began to hold her in my arms and began to pray. As I went inside that house and her mama, her daddy took her and her mama's life. Right there in front of that child. I'm talking about a hurting world. We don't know what we're going through. We don't know what that person that's sitting by us is going through. 
we got to have somebody next to us that is positive. We got to hook the positive to positive and get the negative out of our life and say, hey, I don't have any, I don't have any hope right now. Can you please help me? Can you please pray with me? Can you please get the devil off my back? He's trying to destroy me. My heart was broken. My heart was beat. But God is still on the throne. What I'm saying today is God, that young girl, had went through so much in her life. But you can't turn away from God. I'm still holding on. Even though the ship's been battered. Even though the cells of your life is torn. Even though the things of this world is just going crazy around you. Things are just eating up everything around you. But the anchor still holds. He's still in the midst of your situation. He's still on the throne. He's still doing miracles. He's still the same God. Stand to your feet tonight. You know, blind Bartimaeus, pack mans were trying to keep him back. You need to be quiet, blind Bartimaeus. You just need to be quiet. There's other people that need to be healed. I want to tell you right now, the first thing I did when I came back to church, Brother Harper, I didn't care. I was, I was out of church for probably two months. But the first thing I wanted to do was get to the, to get to the throne room of God. Yeah, I still felt God at home, but I didn't feel him. You, I mean, you've got to be in the house. You've got to hear the word of God. You've got to have, you've got to have the food of God in your life. I couldn't wait, Brother Harper, to get back to, the, to God. I still have. Blind Bartimaeus said, I'm not giving up, I'm not giving in, and I'm not quitting. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me. It's me, God. And the Bible says when he went, he threw away his garment. Old things pass away. Behold, everything become new. When you come up out of when you come out of darkness into his marvelous light, you leave the darkness behind you. Leave the things behind you and move forward. Because that's when God can bless you. Reach out and touch him. As God speaks to you tonight. Hallelujah. All right. I'm not going to try to over-emotionalize it. I'm going to talk to you because I think you people are smart enough to figure it out. I don't think there's anybody uneducated or dumb in this room. And right now you know whether you're ready to meet God or not ready to meet God. You know whether you're filled with the Holy Ghost or not filled. You know if you got victory in your life or you got some things out of line. You know whether you're a sinner or you belong to the Lord. You know if you got challenges or you know if you got victory. I'm just telling you right now, wherever you are, come on, come on. Let's come with just some good old sound common sense and say I'm going to get my heart right with God. Oh, yes. I know. That's it. That's it. That's it. Just be false. Come on, sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it.
pray for you.
together all the way around her. Let her hear you talk in tongues in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh! 